Okay, so there's this startup. You might have heard of it. It's called Katabook. They're based in Bengaluru. And in March of 2022, the founder and CEO of that company, Ravish Naresh, tweeted this. Startups in HSR and Kormangala, India's Silicon Valley, are already generating billions of dollars of taxes, yet we have very bad roads. Almost daily power cuts, poor quality water supply, unusable footpaths. Many rural areas now have better basic infra than India's Silicon Valley. Now, obviously, this is a video about Hyderabad, not Bengaluru. So let me show you one of the replies to that tweet. So this is KT Ramara, the Minister of Municipal Administration and Urban Development, Industries and Commerce and Information Technology in Telangana. And he replied to Ravish Naresh's tweet saying, pack your bags and move to Hyderabad. We have better physical infrastructure and equally good social infrastructure. Our airport is one of the best and getting in and out of the city is a breeze. More importantly, our government's focus is on 3i mantra, innovation, infrastructure, infrastructure and inclusive growth. Now, one thing that's really interesting to me about Hyderabad is that they pretty much started off on equal footing as compared to Bengaluru back in the 90s. The same thing that kickstarted Bengaluru's startup ecosystem, the influx of multinational IT companies, happened in Hyderabad as well. In fact, up until the mid aughts, there really was no clear Silicon Valley of India. It could have been Hyderabad, it could have been Bengaluru, it could have been both. But then between 2009 and 2014, Hyderabad went through a bit of a slowdown. There was this fight that was happening between between the new state of Telangana and the pre-existing state of Andhra Pradesh. Both states wanted Hyderabad, and it was around this time period that Indian startups really started to take off. So Hyderabad unfortunately missed out somewhat on that startup boom, but that doesn't mean that the city can't catch up. In fact, today, as KTR pointed out in his tweet, Hyderabad is one of the best Indian cities to start up in. It's one of the fastest growing startup hubs in India with over 7,300 startups registered in the city right now, according to the Government of India's Startup India portal. And beyond infrastructure and innovation, one big reason why Hyderabad has become such a hotbed for entrepreneurship is support from the VC ecosystem. In the first three months of 2022, the city saw a 329% increase in funding compared to the previous year. And they also have one of India's largest innovation and entrepreneurship incubators, T-Hub, which is backed by the government of Telangana. And the government itself is encouraging and furthering entrepreneurship through their innovation policy too. And so in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the top 10 Hyderabad startups that are making the most of this thriving ecosystem. Coming up right after this. Starting things off at number 10, we have electric two-wheeler startup Pure EV. Founded by two IITNs, Nishan Dongri and Rohit Badera in 2016, Pure EV began its journey as an IIT Hyderabad incubated startup, and today they are one of the leading electric two-wheeler startups in India. Their most recent product, an electric motorcycle called the Etris 350, is, according to Pure EV, completely designed, developed, and manufactured in India. But the company also has electric scooters for sale too, the E Pluto 7G and the E Trans Neo. And on May 21st of 2022, Pure EV crossed a huge milestone milestone more than 50,000 electric two-wheeler deliveries. Now, the journey hasn't necessarily been easy for Pure EV. Several of their scooters have caught fire in recent months, but they've responded to these incidents by voluntarily recalling 2,000 electric scooters and are working hard to make sure this doesn't happen again. The startup's main investor, Hyderabad-based angel VC Nanapaneni, poured $35 million into the company back in 2019, and they've been able to go a long way with this angel funding and the revenue that they brought in from their scooter and bike sales. Next up at number Number nine, we have space tech startup Skyroot Aerospace. Started by two former ISRO scientists, Naga Bharataka and Pawan Kumar Chandana in 2018, the startup's goal, and I'm getting this right from their website, is to open space for all by making spaceflight affordable, reliable, and regular. This is such an easy and clear mission to get behind, but they're not just talking about this, they are actually doing it. In August of 2020, they successfully test-fired an upper-stage rocket engine called Raman, and then in December of 2020, they became India's first private sector company to successfully test-fire a solid propulsion rocket stage engine designed and developed by then, called Kalam 5. Then, in September of 2021, after multiple successes, the company signed an MOU with ISRO, giving them access to ISRO's facilities and expertise. This was a huge win for the company, and they've since gone on to test-fire the 1-1, India's first privately developed fully cryogenic rocket engine. 
Their current project, Vikram 1, will be India's first ever privately designed and developed launch vehicle, which they're hoping to launch before 2022 is over. Now, obviously, Skyroot Aerospace is still in the R&D stage. They haven't started commercial operations yet, so they've been sustaining their development using venture capital that they've raised from their investors. And to date, they've raised $17 million through a seed round, a Series A, and a convertible note round. Moving into number eight now, we have B2B fintech startup Swipe. The company was founded in 2021 by two serial entrepreneurs and friends, Aditya Vimuganti and Sri Teja Alaparti. And their goal was simple, make life easier for small and medium-sized businesses. So the problem faced by India's SMBs, of which there are upwards of 63 million, is a three-step problem, billing, accounting, and then tax filing. Now, competitors like Katabook and OK Credit, they handle the first two parts of this process, their digital ledger and bookkeeping solutions. But that last part, the tax filing part, that's handled by the SMB themselves. They have to take the billing and invoicing data generated by these apps and bring them over to a new app to file their returns. OK Credit and Katabook have blog posts explaining how to file your taxes as an SMB, and they even point to other apps and software like, for example, ProfitBooks and ClearTax, but they themselves don't handle it. And that's where Swipe really shines. It's a comprehensive all-in-one platform where an SMB can generate bills and invoices, then these are tallied up, so Swipe is a bookkeeping platform too. And then when it comes time for the SMB to file their GST, all that information is already there in Swipe, and users can generate GST reports with a single tap. Besides this, there's also other features like inventory management and a free online storefront builder. And actually, a lot of Swipe's offerings are totally free, which is one of the reasons why since June of 2021, more than 100,000 MSMEs have registered themselves with the platform. Swipe was part of Y Combinator's summer 2021 batch, and they raised a $125,000 pre-seed round from YC, and then went on to close a $2 million seed round from more than 25 investors, including Y Combinator, Kunal Shah, and GFC, to name a few. Coming to number seven now, we have recycling service and marketplace startup Recycle. The company was started by serial entrepreneur Abhidish Pandey, who, after selling his second startup, Marjack, in 2015, decided to build his next business out of trash. First, he spent two years understanding the industry. He visited junk dealers and rag pickers to understand how they work, how the waste is collected, and how it's processed and treated. Finally, in 2017, Abhi, along with his cousin Abhishek Deshpande and his former associate, Anirudh Jalan, started Recycle. In the early days, the startup followed a B2C model where they would work with rag pickers to collect waste from residential homes and deposit this waste at Recycle's recycling centers. But after doing this for two years, they realized that they could make more of an impact if they pivoted to a B2B model, processing waste for businesses instead of everyday people. The corporations that Recycle works with generate upwards of 10 kilos of waste per day. And Recycle sends their team of waste collectors to gather this waste and then deposit it at the startup's processing centers to be recycled. Besides this, the startup has also created Asia's first circular economy recycling marketplace where buyers and sellers of recycled materials can transact. And from these two business lines, Recycle has been able to build a financially lucrative business. Their gross waste value in 2020 was 20 crore rupees, and 5.2 crore rupees of this was revenue. But in January of 2022, Uphe predicted that the startup's annual revenue would cross 220 crore rupees by the end of the quarter. And these kinds of results have the startup's investors really excited. Recycle closed a $4 million pre-series A round in 2020 and a $22 million venture round in 2022 to continue making India and Asia a more environmentally sustainable and clean place. Next up at number six, we have B2B health tech startup Care. Founded by Dinesh Koka, Kiran Kalakuntala, Dr. Noel Kudenho, and Srikant Samudrala, Care works with corporates to offer health benefit programs to their employees. And this is going really well for them, but it's not actually how they began. See, before the company was started in 2014, Kiran lived in Seattle. His parents, though, were in Hyderabad, and from this arrangement arose a problem. Kiran, an NRI, was having a really hard time keeping track of his parents' health. Things came to a head when Kiran's father got a surgery done before the doctors even understood the root cause of the problem, and nobody in Kiran's family understood why the surgery was even recommended. They just did it because they were told to. And not surprisingly, this really frustrated Kiran, and so he set out to build a platform where patients could store their medical records digitally and share them with their family members. And to add a 
a fresh spin on this idea, Eakin Care would also analyze the patient's health data to provide personalized recommendations. Of course, the startup quickly realized that B2C preventative healthcare was a very hard sell because people don't usually try to improve their health until serious symptoms start to show up. So the company ended up pivoting to a more profitable B2B2C model, where employee-friendly companies would foot the bill and employees would be the ultimate beneficiaries. Eakin Care currently has upwards of 450 corporate clients, which equates to roughly 1.5 million employees benefiting from Eakin Care services, and this has resulted in an incredible 300,000 medical interventions that wouldn't have taken place if not for Eakin Care. In the financial year of 2022, Eakin Care reported that their ARR had increased by 3.5x, and Kiran described this as Eakin Care being in the sweet spot, although we don't really know much more than that about their financial situation. In March of 2022, though, Eakin Care raised a $15 million Series B round, bringing the total funds that they've raised from their investors since 2014 to $20.7 million. Moving on to number five now, we have advertising startup Adamo. The company was founded by Krishna Chaitanya Bomakanti, Sandeep Bomiredi, and Sravant Kajula back in 2016 with the goal of revolutionizing outdoor advertising. And their approach here is twofold. One, make outdoor ads pretty with attractive, tasteful frames like you'd see on a painting or a photograph. And two, put them in places where people will actually look at them, namely residential societies. When you're in a cab and you're driving down the road and you spot a hoarding or a billboard, or you're in the mall or an airport and you're walking past an advertisement every couple of seconds, the conversion rate for companies who are advertising these products or services is low because you, the viewer of the ad, are distracted. But when you're at home, when you're in your society or your apartment building, you're relaxed, you're comfortable. And thanks to COVID-19, which increased e-commerce penetration in India, you might be more open to the idea of shopping on your smartphone. Adomi built a prototype for this service back in 2017. They were testing mounted digital screens on just five cabs in Hyderabad, but today the startup is partnered with over 700 brands. They have 18,500 screens across 12 cities in India. And as they've grown and set up more and more screens across the country, things have started to go really well for them. Their sales turnover stood at 3.27 crore rupees in the financial year of 2021, and they raised a $15 million corporate round where Zomato acquired 19% of the company in 2022 at an estimated $78.94 million valuation, bringing the total external capital the startup has raised to $18.3 million. Coming to number four now, we have instant ambulance startup Stan Plus. Three INSE graduates, Antoine Porson, Jose Leon, and Prabhadeep Singh, started the company back in 2016 with the goal of basically building the Uber of ambulances. The way that they've done this is by building a tech platform that aggregates and standardizes hospital ambulances, private operators, and government-run services, along with other options like air ambulances at comparatively affordable prices through a business vertical called Stan Air. They also collaborated with Grip Invest back in 2021 to lease 100 vehicles, bringing the total number of ambulances in their own fleet to 900. They've also partnered with over 40 hospitals in several tier one and tier two cities across India to manage their medical response systems and patient transportation, which includes an additional 3,000 plus ambulances. And this is one industry that I think everybody can agree should be instant. Stan Plus is targeting 15 minutes or less right now. And to help them do this, the startup's investors have poured $20 million into their Series A round in 2022, bringing the total amount of funding that they've raised to $22.7 million. And as far as revenue goes, the last we heard from Stan Plus, they were on track to close the financial year of 2022 with revenues of around $10 million, and they were planning to 3x that number in the financial year of 2023. Next up at number three, we have EdTech startup Bunju. The company was founded by Nilakanta Banu Prakash, who at the age of 15 held the title of world's fastest human calculator. Now, when Nilakanta got a bit older, he wanted to erase the fear of math that so many students have, myself included. I am terrified and terrible at math. And so he started his entrepreneurial journey in June of 2020, soon after the COVID-19 pandemic started. And he, along with his team, started teaching math to students through recorded lecture videos on YouTube. Later that same year, Nilakanta incorporated the company, Banju, with a target customer aged between five and 16 years old and three courses priced between 15,000 rupees and 65,000 rupees. The startup currently has a user base of over 30,000 students across 10 countries, and they recently raised their seed round of $2 million from investors like Lightspeed and Kunal Shah. And they're also in talks to raise a $15 million Series A round, which would value them at between 70 and $75 million. And while these numbers may not be up to date, as of the financial financial year of 2021, Banju was profitable. They brought in 1.1 lakh rupees in profit on operating revenue of 5.5 lakh rupees. 
Moving into number two now, we have footwear startup Neiman's. And like many D2C brands, this one was born out of a personal struggle. Garan Chabro was traveling in Spain in 2016 when he almost missed a train because he'd packed too many shoes. At the time, he thought he needed to bring running shoes, casual shoes, lounging shoes, and extra shoes. But after this experience, he came up with the idea for an all-in-one shoe and began to do research into shoe manufacturing hubs around the world. During his research, he came across a material called merino wool, which Australia has an abundant supply and it's natural and renewable. So in 2018, Tharan launched Neiman's along with Amarpreet Singh, and the idea here was for this to be a natural, sustainable D2C merino wool shoe company. Eventually though, as the company's popularity grew, they expanded out of the D2C model to put their shoes on the shelves of offline stores like Shopperstop, Lifestyle, and online marketplaces like Amazon and Flipkart, which enabled them to grow their revenues and customer base by 15x in 2021 and raise $5.15 million as a part of their ongoing Series B round, which will likely close at double or triple this number. And this $5.15 million has valued them at between $25 and $27 million, according to and tracker. The startup closed the financial year of 2022 with 50 crore rupees in revenue, which is about 7x their financial year of 2021 figures. And also in total, Neiman's has raised $9.8 million from their investors. And finally, coming in at number one, we have SaaS unicorn Darwin Box. The company was started by Chaitanya Pedi, Giant Paliti, and Rohit Chenamaneni back in 2015. And the idea to start Darwin Box came up during a casual discussion. The co-founder trio were sharing the experiences that they'd had with HR software at their corporate jobs and realized that none of the available products on the market were focusing on the entire HR lifecycle. To fill this gap, Darwin Box was born. And in its current form, Darwin Box automates day-to-day -day HR processes like recruiting, managing, developing, and optimizing employees. And they have a global presence in over 90 countries. Their customer base is 650 enterprises strong. And according to an anonymous source, their ARR is currently sitting at $30 million year on year as of January of 2022. Oh, and one really interesting fact here is that at the start of 2021, Darwin Box had 500 customers. And then that number went up to 650 by the end of the year. And those 150 additional customers bring in as much revenue as the original 500 did. In January of 2022, after raising a $72 million Series D round, Darwin Box became a unicorn. Their investors have poured upwards of $107 million into the company so far. And now Darwin Box is in the very early stages of planning an IPO. Although it's too early to say when that IPO would happen, definitely not in the next 18 or 24 months though. All right, those were our picks for the top 10 Hyderabad startups. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. And now just one very important footnote here. We didn't arrange this list based on valuation or funds raised or anything like that. This was just startups that we felt were important and interesting. And we know that you probably we have other startups that you would have liked to see on this list. So let us know what those startups are in the comments section. And if you want us to make other top 10 videos about a specific city or even a state, then let us know which place you want us to make a video about and why in a comment down below. All right, I will see you in the next one.